Hello everybody, welcome to the channel Out of Ammo, Out of Time. I'm your host, Krabby Terror 8 and here we are in episode 29. Yes, I did my homework and made sure I knew. Episode 29 of the Investigator Games Season 2, Episode 29, with everybody's favourite bounty hunter, Tony Morgan. Yes, and for those of you who are new to the channel, I heartily welcome you. Thank you so much for watching. Um, it's been, this is the third year I've been doing this and I can't believe um, people are still watching <laughs> me do the same thing over and over again. I'm actually looking forward to, even though I don't like um, the Devara Blow, I'm actually kind of looking forward to getting to play that a few hundred times. So um, yes, anyway, enough about that. What is the Investigator Games it's like the Hunger Games, we take each investigator, true solo, through a scenario, and in Season 1 that was The Gathering, and in Season 2 it is The Midnight Masks. And depending on how they do, um, they end up in a league table, like this one. Yes, and we can see all of the investigators from the tip-top top, top um, all the way down to the bottom, and of course, yes, Leo, the top, top three flatmates that live in Arkham, Leo DeLuca, Ashcan, Pete, Roland Banks, yes, they're all still at the top of the table. And we go all the way down, poor old Calvin at the bottom. So yes, it's whether Tony can manage to topple any of the top three. It'd be interesting to see if he could. And we have done 29 of, uh, 28 of these, this is the 29th. And we are up to the Dream Eaters uh, investigators. And this is the rogue for Dream Eaters, Tony Morgan. Now, spoilers, if you are new to Arkham Horror, the living card game you've never played before, um, then I suggest you stop now and you go and seek out introductory material about how to play, because I'm assuming you know how to play at least a little bit. I do know people do come, though, just to check out the investigators, which is fine. But if you're expecting a tutorial, um, then I don't do that. Now, if you want more of an in-depth analysis on how to play the lore and the story and everything about the gathering and the midnight masks i've done videos on both of those uh, which have been very popular uh, and they're on my channel and if you haven't seen those i would hardly recommend that you have a look at those as well so yes so here we are with tony morgan so uh, let's just get ourselves acquainted with him We'll also just have a look at what changes I've made to his deck. And um, I think that's that's kind of uh, the things that we'll do. Um, he's just at the house at the moment, just waiting to start the investigator games, as they all are. Um, so if we have a look at his stat line, <clears throat> this is one of those stat lines which is sort of a bit um, unbalanced in a sense. Um, because it has one great big whopping standout, which is his fight. Um, kind of not unusual to have higher fight in rogues, but this high, five fight. I don't know if there's any other rogues have a fight of five. I don't, can't think of any off the top of my head, but I could be wrong. So very, very high fight. Um, okay in terms of intellect, and then you know, pretty low in terms of willpower and evasion. Now that tells you a couple of things, of course. It tells you you're going to be a fighter, not an evader. Um, which means that in Rogue, you know, all those sorts of um, sneak attack, all those sorts of cards which benefit from evasion, you probably are not really Toadie's bag. Um, very much uh, about fighting. Okay, in terms of getting clues, but you'll probably need some help, lock picks and the like. And then the biggest problem for Tony is going up against the Mythos in the encounter phase with a very measly two willpower, going to be a bit of a problem. Uh, and so something, um, you know, need things like Guts and, and other sorts of cards in the deck, particularly in True Solo, but 
just to, generally just to help you pass those more critical encounter deck uh, kind of um, things. So yeah, that's his stat line. Um, he's he's traded criminal and hunter. Uh, now you can um, take an additional action during your turn, which can only be used to engage and fight an enemy with one or more bounties on it. So that immediately tells you that there's an incentive for Tony Morgan to put bounties onto enemies. So he's very much about enemy engagement. Now, how do you do that? Well, that's what this card over here is about. Bounty contracts, it starts with six on it. It's a permanent, so it sits there. It has a reaction trigger. After an enemy enters play, move one to three bounties from bounty contracts to that enemy to a maximum of that enemy's health. After you defeat an enemy with one or more bounties on it, move its bounties to your resource pool as resources. So, and of course, um, if you put a bounty on there, which why wouldn't you, then you can take an additional action um, which you can use to fight. So essentially you're, you're kind of marking enemies to take down uh, for bounties. Um, that's, that's sort of the way that it works. And you've got six. So um, um, yeah, so it's got six on it. Now you can actually put more bounty contracts on it um, with your weapon. So your weapon, the signature weapon that um, that uh, Tony has allows you to put bounties on that. And indeed your Elder Sign effect also allows you to put bounties on bounty contracts as well. Now, that's not going to come up so much, um, but if you get your weapon down on the table, then there's some opportunities there. So you can you can end up with uh, you know more than six if, if you get the right cards at the right time. So that's Tony in a nutshell. Interesting, um, sort of a fighter rogue sort of hybrid, I guess. Um, so standard deck size, uh, rogue cards level 0 to 5, neutral cards 0 to 5, and up to 10 0 to 1 events and or skills of your secondary class. So um, I think obviously Guardian is an obvious choice um, for Tony because, I mean, there's some reasonable weapons in... Um, in uh, in the in the um, rogue class, and it's gotten better. Um, but obviously, if you can use things like the machete, um, things like that. Now we're not using taboo here. It's hard enough because every investigator starts with their standard starter deck, so we don't use taboo. And then um, then we just have the copies of Tony's thirty eight long colt, which is the one we we're talking about, where you can put bounties back onto Tony. Uh, etc. So Tony tracked down low life scum in every lousy corner of the world, but nothing could have prepared him for the killing for the thing he killed in Innsmouth. It had the form of a man more or less, but it was covered in loathsome scales and slime like some horrid creature of the deep. It stank of salt water, rotten fish and blood. He would have let it go when it drove it dove into the river, but he'd never let a bounty escape before and he wasn't about to start then. Ever since he's found a new kind of dirt bag to hunt, ordinary mobster or otherworldly monster, Tony will take it down if someone is willing to pay him for it. So there we go. He's fairly amoral in that sense. He's just, just in it to get the bounties. When I find that beast, I'll put it down for good. So he's not really sort of uh, out to save the world. He's just, just doing these things for his own gains, if you like. So there we go. That's Tony Morgan. Now, in terms of his, um, in terms of his overall deck, I'm not going to go through his overall deck in detail. I do that in the gathering, but I just want to highlight he got six XP uh, from the gathering. So the way that it works is that um, um, we carry over the XP obviously from the gathering, and uh, yeah. So I made a few changes to his deck based on that. Um, and uh, the main things were that uh, I made sure he's got um, two 41 derringers. So he's got two of his 38 long colts and two of his 41 derringers. So he's got four weapons and he's got two knives. So he's got plenty of weapons. And I put in 45 Tom Thompson as well. So that's a lot of weapons, but he's really about weapons. So I wanted to make sure I've got lots of choices there. I've also put in another Leo DeLuca. Um, 
And I should say I used Adaptable, so which meant I was able to swap out a whole lot of other cards as well. So I put in two Adaptables as well, which meant, as you can see, I made a lot of changes. Um, so we've got, yeah, 241 Derringers now. We've got 245 Thompsons. We've got two Leo DeLucas, two Hard Knocks, um, because they can help with fighting. And, uh, and also the other thing about um, Hard Knocks is uh, it allows you to evade as well. We've got two elusive in there, which is good in the midnight masks. Um, we've got two opportunists now, um, and um, we've got two vicious blows as well. So we took out things like dynamite blast, switchblade, burglary, pickpocketing, backstab, backstab, and sneak attack. They were in his original deck, and not really much help because with two evasion didn't really make a lot of sense. And then we've got yeah, those were the main changes that we made. Don't know. What do you think? Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's going to be pretty good. Um, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so that's what we're um, doing with Tony in terms of his his deck. Now, I had a talk to Tony in the uh, green room. Well, not the green room. Sorry, in the trailer that we use as a green room. Thank you, um, Miss Katonic Trailer Hire. Um, we had a chat. Um, so he's keen to do well because he wants to come top and get the prize money. Uh, I haven't the heart to tell him that there actually isn't prize money. It's just the fame and fortune that uh, one gets from doing the investigator games. Um, there are a number of lucrative, um, you know, um, there are a number of um, lucrative sponsorship deals that could be on the table. If you do happen to top the um, the investigator games, you know Nike, Microsoft, um, you know Pfizer. There's all kinds of people like that who would probably uh, jump at the chance of sponsoring the, uh, the the crowning winner of the investigator games. So there may be some some money that way. But uh, I haven't had the heart to tell Tony that there's not actually a, uh, a prize money pool uh, at, at the end. It's a pretty lean and mean operation. Uh, and uh, and so, no, that, that's not going to be the case. I mean, uh, Roland Banks, you know, he's the head of the union that, that sort of represents the um, investigators. He talked to me about setting up a Patreon, which could fund something like that. But, but it's, it's never going to be large enough to... Uh, distribute anything you know you know people, people like Jenny Jenny Barnes and Preston Fairmont would be uninterested in fact I spoke to Jenny and Preston to see whether they would lump in some cash um, you know as a sort of prize money but then I realized of course that there'd be a conflict of interest there so that didn't come off either but never mind so anyway Tony is at the um, at the at the uh, house he's ready to go in the midnight mass we're all set up here I'm hoping he does well. Um, all we need to do is just read out the Agenda and Act deck and then wait for the horn to start, and he can start in episode 29. So Agenda 1A, Predator or Prey, Lita seems convinced of a conspiracy within the city of Arkham. She believes that a secret cult serves the ghouls that live in the crypts beneath the city, and that several of the cult's prominent members are scattered throughout Arkham. As you begin searching for them, you can't shake the feeling that you... Two are being hunted. Action, resign. You don't want to risk taking too long, so you head to safety with the information you gather gathered. I wonder in the history of this game if anybody has ever resigned in Agenda 1A. I suppose if things are going really badly, you would. I guess, you know, if things are going really terribly, you could resign, which I've never done, which I suppose you could, but anyway. And uncovering the conspiracy, you've one night to find members of this cult and unveil their plan. The more members of the cult you can find and interrogate before midnight, the better. Investigators spend two clues per... This is an action. Investigators spend two clues per investigator as a group. Draw the top card of the cultist deck. Objective, find as many unique cultist enemies as you can and add them to the victory display. If there are six unique cultist enemies in the victory display, advance. Hint, note, not all six of them are in the cultist deck. Ooh, where's the other one? Okay, so there we go. So, yep, 
<clears throat> so oh, there it goes. There goes the horn, and we are ready to play episode twenty-nine of season two of the Investigator Games. So, what do we want? What do we want? What do we want? Well, of course, we want Leo De Luca. That's a given. We want weapons. That's super helpful as well. They're the main things that we need. I mean, everything else is is pretty fine, but they're the main ones that we want. So let's shuffle up and draw many. Let's draw five. There we go. And there we go. We got Leo De Luca in the first, in the very first draw. So that's awesome that we've got him. We've also got emergency cash, which is great because we are going to need more cash, even though we get them from bounties. We've got a vicious blow. So the only thing that we're missing is a weapon. So I'm actually going to be really aggressive here because we need a weapon and I will draw another three. One, two, three, no weapon. Okay, that is a problem. That is a problem, but we've got other things. So we're just gonna have to get by without a weapon in the short term and hopefully one will turn up. So let's start first action. Uh, let's play emergency cash. So we get three resources. Very nice. Yep. Get that out of the way. Second action, we will spend five, um, which leaves us with three. And we will bring out the upgraded version of Leo De Luca. So that was our second action, but we get another action now. So we've still got two actions. Third action, I'm going to spend two and bring out hard knocks. Yep, so that we've uh, we've got that on board. So we just need a weapon and we're laughing. Final action, I'm going to avail myself of the facilities. I'm going to draw a card and gain a resource. And still no weapon though. So there we go. That was our first round. That was pretty good. We got out. We emergency cashed ourselves. We brought out Leo De Luca. We played Hard Knocks, and then we got ourselves a card and a resource, but no weapon. So we're okay with, uh, um, you know, basic acolytes, but uh, anything more than that's going to be slightly problematic. So anyway, there we go. There's a start. So next time we'll work on getting the clues and get moving in that way. Okay, so we move into enemy phase or the enema phase, as I like to call it. There's no enemies to speak of, so we move into upkeep. Yay, we get the Derringer. There we go. We've got a weapon now. That's good. Okay, okay. We'll be cooking with gas. So we move into the mythos phase. First doom is down. Let's see what the lovely encounter deck has. And it's got a locked door. Okay. Well, I guess we can break it down, I suppose. But uh, that's a bit of a pain. All right, slight pain, but no big deal. All right, let's move into the investigation phase. Four actions on to Tony. Nothing to fight at the moment. Um, so I'm hoping we get some things come through. I want to know that, you know, there will be something at some stage. But first action is obvious. We'll go ahead and spend three. And we will bring out the Le Derringeur. There we go with uh, three on it, three ammo. Great. So we're we're set up from that perspective. Um, now, fight. We are a fight of five, and this is a, you know we could waste time here. So I'm just going to go up to uh, River Town, flip that, and try and get this clue. So that was first action was to play the cut to play the derringer. Second action to move. Third action investigate one versus a three. Uh, we'll just straight up do one versus a three. Chaos bag gives us a minus two, so we succeed and we get that clue. We've got one action left. <clears throat> um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, what do we do? What do we do? I think we try and get into the graveyard. Get there now. Uh, time is of the essence, so we flip that. Now we have to test three willpower. We have two willpower. I can make that three willpower. See if we can do it. Um, and um, yeah, 
this. Chaos Bag gives us an Elder Sign. <laughs> so we get plus two. So let me just think about this because we were a three. That gives us a five. Five versus three. So we're two up. So we don't get to keep Opportunist. We don't get the horror. But because we had an Elder Sign, place one bounty on bounty contracts. So we get an extra bounty on the bounty contracts. Very nice. Okay, so that was pretty good. We um, we got out of the house. We moved to uh, the doors locked, so we can't look for the clues there. We moved to Rivertown. We got that clue, and we moved into the graveyard. Oh, we played the Derringer first. We played the Derringer. We moved to Rivertown. We got the clue, and then we moved to the graveyard, and we didn't take any horror. So we are ready to get those other clues and get the first cultist down on the table next time. So enemy phase, unfortunately no enemies to speak of. Upkeep phase, we get an overpower, that's nice. We're setting ourselves up at least for the Masked Hunter, if nothing else. We can put three bounties onto the Masked Hunter and at least do that, so if nothing else. So uh, let's move into the second round with the Mythos phase. We're in turn three. Let's see what the lovely encounter deck has. And we get Wings of Darkness. Okay, test four. We are a two. Um, but we can kind of spend our way out of it. Is it worth it? Well, look, let's try because, you know, manual dexterity if we succeed. So we're up to four. I can make that five versus a four with hard knocks. So five versus a four. Chaos Beggars is a minus two. So we don't pass, unfortunately. Um, so we do take a horror and a damage. And we move back to Rivertown. Ah, it's more of a, it's just a bit of a pain, that's all. So we move into investigation phase. Three actions on to Tony. First action, we will move back again to the graveyard. Test three, um, yeah, it's three versus two. Chaos Bag gives us a skull which is zero, but we still fail, so we take two horror. Oh dear, actually, that's... Oh, hold on, we can put a horror onto Leo. There we go. So that was our first action. Sorry, and we've got four actions, don't we, because of uh, Leo. So that was our first action. Okay, let's do some investigatoring. Second action, uh, one versus three. We will investigate and get a zero, so we get that clue. Um... Where's our other clue gone? Yeah, for some reason the other clue went. That's okay, we can put another clue down. All right, third action, we will go again. And we get an auto fail. Uh, fourth action, we will go again. And we get a tablet, which is a minus three. So we fail again. If you fail, place one of your clues on your location. That is very frustrating. That is very annoying. That is super annoying. Sometimes this game just drives me around, this Midnight Mass scenario drives me around the twist because we got sent back to Rivertown. We then moved into the graveyard and took more horror. We then, um, we then succeeded in getting a clue. We then auto-failed to get a clue. Then we tableted and didn't get a clue and had to put our clue back. So we're literally back where we were. That is so frustratingly annoying. But anyway, that's the way it goes in the Midnight Masks. So we get into upkeep, more manual dexterity, fine. So we move into the Mythos phase. Three Doom are down, we're halfway through. Let's see what the encounter deck has. Crypt Chill. Okay, well, we're gonna fail this, but that's fine. We've got lots of stuff down on the board. So it's a four and we're a two. Chaos Bag gives us a minus one, so we're going to lose, obviously, hard knocks in that process. There we go. So we move into the investigation phase. Four actions onto Tony. Let's hope that this goes a little bit better. We will investigate again. One versus three. Chaos Bag gives us a minus one, so we get the clue. We will investigate again. Chaos Bag gives us another minus one. That's a bit better. So we've got all of the clues. And we get our first victory point, and the crowd goes wild. Great, fantastic. Okay, we seem like we're back on track. We've had a couple of false starts, but we're back on track. Next action, let's go and throw in two of the clues and see what cultist we get. There we go, let's shuffle them up. And who do we get? 
we get Virginia, Victoria Devereaux, not Virginia Devereaux, Victoria Devereaux. Okay, not too bad. We're a bit low on resources at the moment. Um, so uh, we're going to have to let those build up. Although we could actually, I've just realized when an enemy enters play, one to three bounties. So let's put, um, let's put a couple of bounties on to uh, Virginia. Victoria, sorry, keep calling it Virginia. Um, in that way, so yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've got one action left. Um, we're not we're a bit low on resources and kind of low on cards. So for my final action, I'm going to stay where I am, but I'm going to draw a card and we get elusive. Nice card. Okay, so there we go. That was pretty good. We um, investigated, we investigated, we got the victory point, we brought out Victoria Devereaux, and then we drew a card. We got elusive, which is a nice card to get. Okay, so we move into the enemy phase. Well, Victoria's just up there at north side, just looking at the uh, looking at the skull. We had another elusive, elusives for days, and we'll move into the mythos phase. Four Doomer down. Let's see what the encounter deck has, and it's got mysterious chanting. Two Doom on the nearest cultist enemy. Well, that kind of focuses the mind a little bit, doesn't it? So. That's going to flip unless we actually kill her. And I don't think we can kill her straight off the bat. I don't think. No. It's going to flip. And we can't elusive over there either. It's kind of annoying. Mm. All right. So we move into the investigation phase. Now I wish I'd moved to Rivertown rather than draw a card now. Four actions. One, two, three, four. Actually, though, you get an extra action um, for fighting an enemy. So but I don't want to use my Derringer because I need it. So I'm just thinking about this. What we could do is we can move three to north side. That's three actions. And um, we could we could shoot Victoria, and then we could um, yeah we could use an extra action to finish her off without the Derringer, which leaves the Derringer with only. Um, but then we've got a couple of goes to try and get more weaponry, I suppose. Um, it's just a little bit annoying that, that there's only three ammo on the uh, Derringer. Hmm. Well, the problem is if we don't do that, it's going to flip and then we're going to be in a whole other. So we've got a choice here. We can lose two, two goes, which would be unfortunate, basically. And we can just go for the Mars Hunter and just be ready for him. Or we can get Victoria Devro out of the way and we've, well, essentially we've got three actions to try and get more weaponry and things on board. I don't know what the best thing to do is. Um, I mean, we're essentially, we're saving ourselves a turn. Oh, boy. This is really hard to know because the Mars Hunter... Well, we get four actions with him. If we've got two Derringer, that gets us to four. Yeah, I think we can do it. All right, so let's let's take three actions. So we'll move to Rivertown. We will then move to Miskatonic University. We will then move to up to Northside. Yep, Victoria Devereaux encounters us. There we go. Uh, we will take our extra action we may take an additional action we can use to engage or fight an enemy so we will do that and we will shoot her with the derringer um, now she's a three and we are an uh seven aren't we so we're a seven a seven versus three so i think i just go straight up with that chaos bag it gives me a minus one so i succeed and do two points of damage because I'm two up. Yeah, so I do two points of damage there. That's great. So I've just got to hit her for one now. So for my final action, I will do another 
fight but without the Derringer. So I'm going five versus three. Uh, do we throw in overpower? Five versus three. Have I got anything else for fight? Look, I might use it. Yeah. So make it a seven versus a three because I don't want to fail this because then we would be in a world of trouble. Chaos Bag gives me a zero. Well, that was unnecessary, but we get to draw a card and we get the 45 Thompson right. <laughs> we just need the money. And she's dead. She's been defeated. There we go. So Crag goes wild. Victory points. The Doom comes off. And not only that, because she had two... Um, two bounty contracts on her we get to we get those as resources so then we will be ready to play the 45 thompson next time so that really turned out well what a round so we started at the graveyard we got we moved three uh to north side we took a free action an additional action not a free action to shoot uh victoria devereux which we did and then we um and then we used our fourth action to finish her off uh we drew the 45 thompson we got ourselves some money so we can bring out the 45 thompson and i think we're really quite ready then for the uh, masked hunter when he arrives we will lose the derringer but the 45 thompson is much more uh got more firepower to it so that was a great round good start we've got one cultist in the bag before the um before the mouse hunter arrives enemy phase there are no enemies to speak of why oh that is there i don't know <laughs> uh okay and we'll move into upkeep and we get a dodge that's nice great so we will move into the um, mythos phase there are five doom down so it will flip next time let's see what the encounter deck has it's got hunting shadow you must either spend a clue or take two damage uh, i think we just take the two damage yeah we've got we're fine for damage so we take the damage it's horror we have to be really careful of so there we go okay let's move into the good old investigation phase four actions it really makes a difference if you've got leo de luca on board four actions first action um we will spend six it's expensive isn't it but worth it And we will bring out the 45 Thompson. So we lose the Derringer. 45 Thompson comes out. Nice. Now we're really cooking with gas. We're really ready. So there we go. That was our first action. Now, um, it would be good to get some more, um, some more clues. But we're not really in the business of clue getting. And to be honest... Um, Um, I, there's no point moving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to literally draw three uh, resources so that I can be ready to spend them and get two more clues. So I'll get three resources. There we go. Okay, so we move into the um, enemy phase. There are no enemies to speak of. We move into upkeep and get a flashlight. Okay. All right, and um, and then we move into the mythos phase. There we go. There's the six doom. So we will just get rid of those, and we will flip that. There he is. Hello. Oh, oh, that's cool. Ooh, that's quite a gun you've got there. <laughs> oh, nice, Tony. Uh, and we will put three bounties on him. We're going to go all out bounty here. put three bounties on him which means we get an extra action with that as well uh, Tony's really great from that perspective so there we go we've flipped into agenda 2a time is running short we've got eight action we've got eight rounds left after this but before we can uh, fight the masked hunter of course we have to see what the encounter deck has and of course it does it gives us a hunting night gaunt there we go Ah, oh, that's frustrating and annoying all at the same time. 
But we do have elusive and things, so we've got ways to kind of deal with it, and we've got manual dexterity, so it's not the end of the world. But our main focus right now is let's get this um, let's get this mast hunter dispatched. Um, so four actions onto Tony. Now we can use oh hold on, and we can put we can let's just put one bounty contract because we may not fight him. We might just, but it's good to have an extra action for well that's fight isn't it or engage so actually i'm not going to fight him i'm going to evade him so I'm, I'm, i've changed my mind about that all right so let's um let's go ahead and fight the masked hunter first action we will use our extra action so we will tommy gun the masked hunter oh, i'm loving this tommy gun so we're a seven aren't we we're a seven a seven um, versus a four. Seven versus four. We've got nothing else. Let's just go ahead and do that. Seven versus four. Chaos Bag gives us a minus one. We do two points of damage. <laughs> Ow! Yeah, filling in with lead. That was the first action. Second action, we will do it again. We will Tommy gun the Mars Hunter again. Chaos Bag gives us a Cultist, which is minus two and place a doom on the nearest cultist enemy. Well, we succeed, so we do another two points of damage and we'll put a doom on him. There we go. And then we will go again. Uh, third action. Uh, and uh, Chaos Bag gives us another cultist, <laughs> another one, um, which means another doom, but it doesn't matter because he's now dead. There's the six damage. He goes down, we get the three resources. Nice. We get the three resources. And he is in the victory display, and the crowd goes wild. Now, we've got a decision here um, whether we. So that was three actions. We've got a decision here whether we go ahead and try and kill the Hunting Knight Gaunt thinking maybe we should have put a bounty on him or we just evade him ah, maybe I should have put a bounty on him after all um, but, eh. let's try and evade him so we'll use manual dexterity so that gives us a four a four versus a one chaos bag gives us a minus two yeah so four minus two yes we succeed so we get to draw a card and uh, the um, Hunting Night Gaunt is exhausted. So that's our actions. So there we go. That was pretty good. We um, we killed the um, Hunting Night Gaunt with our Tommy gun. And then we um, evaded the Hunting Night Gaunt. We really need these clues though. And we've got the bloody Hunting Night Gaunt on us. So maybe it might be worthwhile finishing him off after all. So I'm kind of annoyed now. I didn't put a bounty on him. But anyway. Never mind. So we move into invest. Oh, sorry, we move into the enemy phase. Well, the enemy's evaded. We move into upkeep, and we get another hard knock. So, well, that's good, except it's not on the table. Um, so we move into the mythos phase. One doom is down. The hunting night gaunt is back. Let's see what the encounter deck has. Uh, you must either spend a clue or take two damage. Um. I'm going to spend the clue because we're going to get more clues anyway. So, yeah, I don't want to keep taking damage. Um, so there we go. So we move into the investigation phase. Four actions onto Tony. Now, we can either try and evade or we can... Hmm. Look, I feel like we should just kill him. I wish I'd put bounties on him now. So first action, we will, uh, so we are a seven versus a three, a seven versus a three. Um, I'm going to make this a vicious blow. Is that worth it? Because what will we get? One, two, three. Now you see it's no point because, oh, but we can then keep the top. Mm. Let's just go seven versus three. Chaos Bag gives it an auto fail. I can't believe this. This is this is going to be a pain, isn't it? All right, we will um, we will use our Tommy gun, our final Tommy gun, with a vicious blow, and we get an Elder sign this time. 
Uh, place one bounty on bounty contracts. Uh, we do three points of damage. There we go. Final action, we're just going to straight up fight. So that's a three versus a five. Have we got some other way of... Uh, let's just make it a three versus a six. Chaos Bag gives us another minus two cult... Uh, place a doom on the nearest cultist enemy while well, there aren't any. So we succeed and we kill the Hunting Night Gaunt. So there we go. That took two ac three actions, didn't it? Because... We got an auto fail, didn't we? So we got an auto fail. We then um, succeeded and succeeded. So that's all our actions. For our final action, we will um, spend five resources. And we will get two clues. So next time we can bring out the next cultist. All right. Okay, so a little bit inefficient, I know. But anyway... What can you do? I should have put a bounty contract on him. Um, enemy phase, no enemies to speak of. So we move into upkeep, another flashlight. I think the world's trying to tell me something. So we move into the mythos phase, two Doom Down. Let's see what the encounter deck has. And it has Wizard of the Order, any empty location. Okay. Um, where are we gonna go? What are we gonna do? Um, we need a couple more clues, I guess. So we could put him on Miskatonic University, or we could put him on Downtown. Um, I might, Wolfman Drew might pop up. Um, then again, I need to put him somewhere that's not going to... Um, I might put him here. Uh, but we need to get rid of him. Actually, we need to fight him straight up. So I might put him here at Miskatonic University and he gets a doom on him because we've got to deal with him straight away. Yes. Oh, and we'll put um, we'll put a couple of bounty contracts on him at the same time. So that we can do that. Okay. So we move into the investigation phase, four actions on to Tony. Now we can't have this guy hanging around. So we are going to move down to Miskatonic University. Uh, we can use an extra action to fight him. Now we, we don't have... Oh, he's a fighter four, isn't he? And we're a five. Yeah, and we don't have any weapons. So we're just going to have to straight up just punch him. So we're going to punch him five versus four. Chaos Bag gives us a tablet, so that's a minus three. If you fail, place one of your clues on your location. That is so annoying. I can't tell you how freaking annoying that is. All right, we will punch him again. Minus one, five versus four, so we do a damage. Uh, so that was our sec second action. For our third action, we will do it again. And we get a skull, which is minus X is the highest number of doom. So that's minus one. So he is gone. Which means we get two of those. And the Wizard of the Order dies. Okay, so that's all great. We've got one action left. Uh, and we've only got one clue. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to spend two and bring out the flashlight so we lose our Thompson submachine gun and so we can try and get these clues here at Miskatonic University. Okay. So that, was, that wasn't too bad, but it was frustrating that we got to drop a clue again, which means that's just gonna take more time. This is the thing about uh, Midnight Masks. It's easy for you just to get delayed and delayed and delayed, no matter how hard you try. <laughs> and that's exactly what's happening to us. Okay, so we move into the enemy phase. No enemies to speak of. So we move into upkeep, get emergency cash. Getting plenty of money. Okay, three doom down. Let's see what the encounter deck has. And it has false lead if you have no clues. If you have one or more clues, test four. Okay, place more clues on your location. Well, we're a three. We can make that a four. We can make that a five. Let's make that a five. 
That's only a five versus four, isn't it? I'm going to make that a six. Six versus four. Chaos pack. Another tablet. Failed one of your clues on your location. I don't believe this. We're just losing all our clues. This is so frustrating. I'm really, really angry. Frustrated. I'm sorry. I shouldn't get upset, but it's just so... Ugh. <laughs> okay, so here we are at Miskatonic University. There's now four clues on here. If we use our flashlight, we can reduce that by two. That's still three versus two. Um, well, let's go ahead and do it anyway. First action, investigate. So it's a three versus a two. Let's make it a four versus a two. Chaos bag gives it a tablet. So we fail again. How many tablets are there? Second action, we will do it again. We get an elder sign. So we succeed. We get the clue. And we can put another resource on the bounty contract. Third action, we will go again. And we get a minus one. So that's a three versus a two. So we succeed. And I'm going to spend these two clues. I'm not going to hang around for my final action. And we will see what we get. Wow, that was just... And we get... Let's shuffle it up. Oh, come on, just get Peter Warren now. No, we get Herman Collins. Okay. Herman Collins. Well, he's a good end game person because you don't want to be discarding cards early. So he's quite good to leave in the graveyard and then at the end just move in and chuck in your cards. So we will do that. So there we go. So that was okay. What a frustrating round. So what we managed to do was we um, we we lost a clue again, um, but then we were, and I think I, I used two of those. Or did I use three of them? How many times did I investigate? I think I investigated three times, didn't I? Yeah, so I did that three times, not twice. So um, I've lost the flashlight now. Um, which means it's almost impossible for me to get those. So anyway, so we investigated three times, but first time failed. So we got two successes. So we got two clues. We threw them in and we got Herman Collins. So um, it's where we now go to see whether we can get more clues or not. Uh, so we move into, that was the investigation phase. Enemy phase, Herman Collins is just sitting chilling in the graveyard. Upkeep, we get uh, Tony's long cult. That's great. And then we will move into the Mythos phase. We're halfway through. Let's see what the Encounter deck has. And it has another Hunting Night Gaunt. Okay. All right. Let's move. Let's not do the same thing again. Let's actually move uh, a Bounty Contract onto the Hunting Night Gaunt. Okay. So then we will move into Investigation phase. Four actions onto Tony. Now we can try and evade the Hunting Night Gaunt. We can fight him. We are a five versus a three. I think we just go ahead and fight him. Um, oh, but we're only doing one point of damage every time, aren't we? So that's not good. So maybe we do evade him two versus one. We can make it a three, but does that matter? Three versus one. Yes, it does. So first action, we're going to see if we can evade... The Hunting Night Gaunt, Chaos Bag, gives us a plus one, so we succeed. So we evade this guy. Second action, I'm going to spend three. And I'm going to bring out the Long Colt. Third action, let's shoot him. So he's a three and we are a five, but we can use the long colt. So I think engage or fight an enemy. So um, actually we can, we don't need to do that. So we can keep the action because we evaded yet. So we, so we can use a free action. So we get um, plus one for each bounty. So we get plus one. Um, and it deals plus one damage. So we're a six, a six versus a three. 
let's go ahead and do that. Chaos bag gives us a minus one. So we succeed. Now it says here, if the attack defeats an enemy, ah, okay, it doesn't. So, but we do two points of damage onto the Hunting Knight Gaunt. And then for our th third action, we will go again. We'll shoot him again. Chaos Bag gives us a minus four. I don't think that succeeded, did it? Because we are a five. We're a six. Minus four is two. No. Well, we'll do it again, our final action. Chaos Bag gives us a minus two, uh, but we place a doom on the nearest cultist enemy, but we defeat the Hunting Night Gaunt, uh, which means that one bounty on the bounty contracts, and he's dead. Great. So that was all pretty good. The problem is though, it's just accelerated the doom a little bit more. So um, that is a problem. So, um, and we're, we're rapidly running out of time. So, yes. Never mind. Okay, so we move into the enemy phase. There are no enemies to speak of. We move into upkeep and we get a knife. Yeah. So we move into the mythos phase five, doom down. Let's see what the encounter deck has. Another hunting shadow. You must either spend a clue or take two damage. Well, I guess we will be taking the damage. Yep. Okay, so let's move into the investigation phase. Four actions on to Tony. Um, okay, so we've either got to try and dredge up some more clues and get someone else out, uh, but we're up to six. So we so unless we get rid of Herman Collins, um. But what I might do is I might move to south side, south side, flip. Yeah, it's only a shroud of two here, but it's only one clue. Let's see if we can get this clue. So that's a two versus a three. Chaos bag gives us a minus one, so we get a clue. That's good. Um, maybe we should go back to the house, get rid of the locked door and try and get that. And also, we can draw cards and gain resources for Herman Collins. So I might do that. I might um, take two actions and move to, I just realized, I forgot, I could have put a bounty onto Herman Collins, uh, but we wouldn't fight him anyway, so it doesn't actually matter. So we're here at the house. So the idea is, is that we can get another clue um, get a resource, get over to Herman Collins and then defeat him before things end. I think, is there time to do that? Hold on. Let me just rethink that. I have two actions left. I better just think this through. So if I move there, it'll then flip to six, which means seven. So we'd have, we'd have to fight one action, investigate second action. No, it's not worth it. So what we're better off doing actually is moving to Rivertown and drawing a card. Yeah, I think we've got to do it that way because we've got to get rid of Herman Collins because of this doom. Okay, enemy phase, nothing happens. We move into upkeep and we get the guts. That could be helpful. And then we move into mythos. There's now seven doom on the table. Chaos bag, sorry, not chaos bag, encounter, but encounter deck gets us an obscuring fog for here. So we... Good job we didn't stay at the house. Did a good job we changed our minds. Okay, so we move into investigation phase. Four actions on to Tony. So let's, we've got, yep, uh, we move. Move into the graveyard. Now we've got a test. Oh, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, we're going to have to test with the guts. So I think the first action is we draw a card. Oh, nice card. Second action, we will move into the graveyard. Test three, we can throw in the guts. So that's a three versus a four. Chaos bag gives us a plus one, so we succeed and draw a card. Um, oh, look at all these perceptions now. So that's, so we drew a card, we moved. Third action, we'll throw in four. One, two, three. Four, four cards, 
So Herman Collins is in the victory display and the crowd goes wild. There we go. Final action, I'm going to um, move back. I'm going to move back to Rivertown. I don't know if we're going to be able to get the final person, but what we're going to do is we're going to go down and get the clue there. Although we're a three, so the other thing we could do is we could use perception to try and get a Miskatonic. It depends what we draw, because if we drew something with uh, with more intellect pips, it might be worth going to Miskatonic University instead. I just don't know. We'll just have to see. Enemy phase, there are no enemies. So in upkeep, we get another guts. So um, mythos phase, seven of eight. We've literally got one turn left. Um, so, um, yeah, I don't know that we, because we don't want the bells to toll really. Let's see what the encounter deck has. It's got mysterious chanting, two doom on the nearest cultist enemy, no cultist enemy, search the encounter deck for cultist enemy. Okay. That's fine. Doesn't matter now anyway. Um, we'll find an acolyte. Hmm. Oh, let's just put him down at some St. Mary's Hospital with a doom. Okay. So we will move into the investigation phase. Four actions on to Tony. Okay, so we've literally got one one go left. We've got one clue. Um because even if we drew Peter Warren and we fought him, um, I, I'm pretty sure he's got three health. So if we move and investigate and we succeed, um, so if we moved, we'd have two actions left. Then we would have to bring out Peter Warren for a third action. So I don't think that's going to work at all. Um, mm. Mm. although we would get an extra action with the bounties so um, it's whether we can do an extra damage and I don't think that we can because so we'd only be able to do him two points of damage and then the yeah so unless we draw something with perception that allows us to do extra damage or something i really don't see it working because we've uh hmm. and we can't get that for unless we get another perception or something oh uh, well let's try i mean we've got four actions so let's move so let's move to Miskatonic University. Second action, we're going to try and investigate. So we are a five versus four. So we're only one up anyway. Chaos bag gives us, no, not again. Yeah. <laughs> so we fail and we put another clue down. I don't think I've had a game where I've dropped so many clues. We, I don't know how many times we've drawn a tablet this time. It's been really, really a lot. So we've got two actions left. Um, there's really nothing more that we can do. So the best thing for us to do is to resign. So there we are. There we are in ladies and gentlemen. That was that was kind of a frustrating uh, game because um, we could have got a lot more cultists. But the problem was that we kept dropping clues. Uh, so we kept getting stymied in our ability to actually get the clues that we needed to then, and we dropped them. We ended up dropping them at Miskatonic University of all places. So it was really, really frustrating. I got very frustrated with that because every time I wanted to use two clues, they ended up being dropped in places. So that really limited what we could do. But we ended up with three cultists um, in the end. So that's pretty good. Um, and we ended up with two, three, four, five victory points. Um, so that's not too bad as well. 
Um, so all in all, um, pretty good, pretty good. I think the main thing at, at mistake was not putting some bounties on the uh, on the first hunting night gaunt that could have sped things up a little bit. But I'm um, um, ah, just drew so many of those tablets, um, which is just really unusual. But that's the way it goes in Midnight Masks and the Investigator games. So thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Now next time in the Investigator games in episode 30 we will be taking mandy thompson through the midnight masks yes mandy thompson through the midnight masks and i'm looking forward to seeing how she goes but until then i'm crabby terror 8 thank you so much for watching and goodbye <laughs>